all right so welcome back welcome back to this channel so over the last few over the past few videos like over the last few last uh, like couple of weeks or something we have uh, covered stable diffusion we have learned about stable diffusion and uh, its ability to generate realistic images and before that also we have covered like various slot encoders hot encoders and gans and all that so in this uh, i think I actually I like generative like image generation models are like a huge field now and uh, computers are getting very good at generating images given text so you know I, in this video i want to discuss about two models and like i want to discuss or discuss about two models that are you know very much used and you know even though they are not that um they, they do not have any very fascinating idea but be, behind them they do perform very well and are in production so many people are actually using them uh you know to generate very realistic images i just want to cover the map all up and uh just uh talk about these changes that they have made and, and maybe in the future we'll we'll be you know delving in you know to, to maybe code them up maybe code these models so in this video we are going to cover the intuition so the basic intuition of what these models are so i think let's get started with this paper uh, which is proposing the model called control net uh, it's it's i think uh, i think a, 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 rel a relatively newer model compared to other papers that we have read uh, like i'm talking about stable diffusion all that so this is control net um wrote by you know the stanford university so they have wrote it they are uh, the model so we will we'll just be trying to cover them what they have wrote in this paper uh, what they have proposed and what they are, they are doing so we we're, we're going to talk about the main changes that they have done and uh, what they have done like definitely you could go through all of these papers you could go through the paper i think it's 33 pages you know uh, quite a long one but uh, i think i'm going to cover the theory right as i you know I, as i'm like pretty as i've already read the paper i i would definitely recommend you to read the paper uh, maybe read the important parts and all that i'll i'll maybe i'll maybe make a future video on how to read a research paper but you know you, you get the idea right if you are if you are following me you know how to read a research paper just go through the paper the main parts and the main model architecture the loss functions all that because that is the main thing so i just i think i'm just going to go to the whiteboard right i'm going to go to the whiteboard and uh, just cover the important things so all right so i'm back with my whiteboard um not whiteboard but yeah the board uh the pen on all that so let's get started uh let's get started with the you now like the theory of control net what what it actually is i'll try to cover it everything fast because uh, the the details are not actually very important which is uh, i think it is just an application of uh, the things that we have already learned right we, we are just going to make like little changes that are like, not big and that does not require like much attention but we will we'll, we'll, we'll cover that anyways so this is the con so the idea of control net is the problem they try to solve is in stable diffusion while we are actually doing uh, building stable diffusion models right there is a chance of so there will be less um, obedience to the model of the model so the you know we provide a text let's say uh, let's say of um, or maybe something like ms dhoni swimming or something like that maybe something like that so the model might not able to or the model might not give much priority to the to the text and might generate something that is a little or uh, not a lot but a little diverging from the uh the text that you have received that might be the case so in that case what we'll be doing is we'll be creating another model ra rather than the uh, like like the stable diffusion model we'll also be training another model we, like using that model we will be able to force the model so we, what we'll be doing is we'll be forcing the model much and more and more to uh, provide much and like provide higher obedience to the text so the way we'll be doing that is uh, we'll also be i'm going i'm going to show you an image that is going to be very helpful uh, I, th I think that's the main part that we have to understand here to understand control net so this is the main architecture so this is the thing 
so before before the stable diffusion what we will be doing is we'll be will be right we'll be taking the text the text prompt and then we'll be passing that through stable diffusion let's say and we'll be getting the output y which is an image right so that is this is the normal stable diffusion pattern that we'll be following but what we'll be doing in the control net is we'll be adding another model right we'll be we'll be creating another model so this is the actual stable diffusion model but we are also going to create another model i'm going to cover that what this model actually is so we are we are not only going to take the x and predict to y but we are also going to take an image for the conditioning i'm, I'm going to talk about that also uh, i'll first show you the inputs and the outputs uh in just a minute so we'll be taking this condition image what the condition actually wants to look like and we'll be passing through some zero convolution and we'll be passing them through a model which is going to be which is we are which we'll also cover and then we'll get the and and then we'll just add both of these values and get that as y right so I, i'll just show you some of the inputs and outputs what they actually look like right so let's say this is the source image right so so what we'll be doing is right we'll be passing a prompt or let's say i'll just show you the okay, so this is the only example we have so we'll be passing a let's say depth map uh, let's say we'll, we'll pass a depth map and based on that we could actually change the prompt so we'll, let's say we can say the you know a deer in these like snowy areas or atlant atlantic or something yeah and we and based on that we could actually pass in a prompt given this uh, input you could actually get this image so the prompt is going to be x and this is going to be c which is going to be which is uh, the thing we are going to condition that so that is the idea of like control net i'll also you know the idea is so let's say we'll have like a text of let's say um mm, what what we'll do uh, let's say a dog is you know eating ice cream or something maybe this is the text we want to like make our model produce an image of so what we could do is we could just get this this so this is x and then rather, so in order to make the model more obedient to this we could input an image like a condition and based on that we could uh, you know pass this through a model and hopefully the model is going to predict an output that we'll be needing so that is the idea of uh, doing this so we'll we'll be passing and we'll be like inputting an image and based on which the model is going to predict the final output so that is the idea of control net to be able to control what we predict through that condition here in image and so that is the idea of uh, how we build the control net so in, like coming to the details i think this is the model so coming to the details we are going to have this stable diffusion model we, we are going to use a stable diffusion model and uh, the main goal of this control net paper is not actually is like there are i think many works done in done in controlling the stable diffusion model so in this field many works have been done but control net is actually more praised and more used or more read because it emphasizes the uh, value of fine tuning so rather than just training the model again so we already have like a powerful model stable diffusion stable diffusion is a very powerful model trained on many many images i think it cost them around 600 700 700000 to actually train the model so rather than training the model again we will be using the power of stable diffusion so the sta like stable diffusion has a uh, knowledge in variety uh, of images so stable diffusion knows how images look like so based on so using this knowledge rather than just training the model again so using this knowledge we should build a model we should build we should develop an architecture that could be able to do uh, the problem that we have that or that could be able to solve the problem that we are proposing so so the idea is so we'll have a stable diffusion model i'll say i'll put that sd so what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be passing this the prompt we'll be passing the prompt to this right so this is going to be logged model while we are training we are not going not going to change any of these weights so we are going to log the model up and then we are going to build another model right we are going to build another model and what that name is uh, it's a, a trainable copy we are going to pass this model the image 
right? The, we're going to pass this model in image. We're going to have like bunch of CNN layers and all that, or maybe unit. And then uh, we're going to take this uh, model and we're going to like add all of this. So I'm going to cover what we're doing. So in this model, after like each layer, essentially we'll be adding this uh, model output to the stable diffusion output. And then we are going to create an output, right? You might not be able to understand what I mean by adding. We are not going to add, add the outputs, but what we'll be doing is, I'll just show you an image that will make you understand everything better. The architecture might much better. So this is the, um, so yeah. So this is the, uh, so the, I think this is the stable diffusion model. So this is the stable diffusion model and this is the control net. So what we'll be doing is in, we will be having a unit, right? So this, this is a unit with like many resonant connections and all that. This is fine. So this is uh, logged. We are not going to train this model, not even a little bit, little bit while we are training. This is going to be like log, logged parameters. We, have, we already have this trained stable diffusion model, right? What we'll be doing is we'll be creating a new model with in which we're going to have a bunch of encoder blocks only encoder blocks, not any decoders. And then what we'll be doing is we will be, you know, like after each uh, like encoder block, after each encoder block, let's say, after this encoder block, we're going to add this value to this output. So essentially we'll be adding like encoder block one, SD encoder block one. So the output of SD encoder block one to SD uh, decoder block one, right? So they're going to be e of equal shapes. So we can add it. So that, so let's say we'll be having like bunch of encoder blocks. So let's say this is stable diffusion. And then we're going to build another model, which is going to have like this, something like that. So after each layer, so each, each of them are like uh, CNN layers. So these are like uh, CNNs and these are uh, CNN transpose and these are like CNNs. So this is a unit. And then after each layer, uh, these are logged by the way, we'll be adding this parameter tool at this value. So we're going to add this value to this value. So we'll be adding the activations. So I'm, I'm going to add this value to the activation of this value or this layer output of this layer. And we're going to add both of these layers and both of them or the, both of them to make sure the model responds better to this uh, input image. So while we're training, we'll, we'll just train the, these models weights. And it's a very good, uh, it, and, and it's pretty intuitional because we'll be updating this model's weights and this model will have access to the C. So this model will have access to the conditional image and based on that, this model will update parameters such that equal importance or like, like much, much, much better importance is given to the input con input conditioning image. So that is the idea of control net. I hope you got uh, everything, what is going to happening. So we'll be adding like, uh, the control nets, uh, like layers to each of this, uh, stable diffusion layers. And hopefully we'll be able to reach a stage where we have, uh, like pretty good ob obedience to the, um, model and we'll, we'll be able to control what is actually happening or what is generated by the model. And that's it. I think that's it for the paper. I think I'm not going to cover anything more. I think the extra one, extra thing is just like further explanation of all, all that. I think this is the main, uh, this is, this is the main control net. Right. So as you can see here. Yeah. So we have like, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good examples here. You can just go through them. I'm just going to go to the next paper. Uh, this is the uh, paper that introduced Dali. Right. We're going to cover that. What is, uh, what, what is Dali and all that. Oh, so, you know, not, nothing big here. I think we have already covered that, but we have already covered most of the parts here, but I think there is only one major thing that we have to discuss major thing. Uh, like it's, it's not major, but it's, but it is relatively major compared to the other things. So the idea, so this is in the Dali, in the Dali model. So the, whatever introduced in this paper. I think this is a pretty old paper, 2021. Yes. Uh, we have the papers, you know, the paper has you know, introduced two steps. So they have introduced two steps in which step number one is just encoding the image. So let's say we have uh, images, right? 
we have we will be having images so the first um step is encoding the training images so we'll having that image and you know just the standard encoding that we have been doing uh since like previous uh so yeah as i was saying uh we're going to have two steps uh, while training again the first step is encoding using a standard vae encoder so we'll be using a vae various auto encoder or a simple auto encoder in which we are going to have a unit in which the loss function is actually reconstruction so we will be taking an input image we'll be, we are going to pass that input image through a um unit and we are going to essentially reconstruct the value so we'll be taking the output and comparing comparing it to the original input image and we we can just get the loss function and try to update this loss function as we go on through optimization and by that we could actually get the latent space and hopefully uh you know uh lower the size or store it in a much smaller uh much smaller data you know just the standard stuff so we'll be performing that a simple auto encoder and in the second step right we construct this problem in a very uh, smart manner what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a let's say let's say a vector and we'll be creating vector in which we are going to have like I, i don't know about the details but uh, i think so essentially yeah we concatenate up to 256 bp at encoded text tokens with the 32 into 32 1024 image tokens and try an auto execute transformer to model the joint distribution of text and uh, image tokens so essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a vector right in which we are going to have like all the uh, let's say for each training uh, set or for each training um, item or for each training point or each row so we're going to have like text and the corresponding image while training so we're going to have like bunch of te- text description and the uh, image so essentially we'll be we'll be passing this text through an encoder let's say a clip en- clip text encoder or any, any any encoder like that we'll be passing them through a encoder we're going to encode this text into something and then essentially we'll be having this text we'll be having this text encodings in this vector and this is the final vector that we want to carry and also we'll be after performing the auto encoder after perform after after decoding this image let's say each image so we we'll, we're going to have that image and the corresponding description we're going to pass the description to a text encoder we'll be getting the output will be uh, this is going to be the output of the text encoder right we'll also be getting that image we're going to pass that image the corresponding image to this description we're going to pass that through a text vae uh, encoder to encode it into a very uh, smaller dimension so essentially we'll be having all of this values here so this will be the text and this will be the image encoding we will we'll be passing them through the model so i'm going to reveal the model what the model is you might be very uh, pretty surprised but the model that we'll be using here to solve this problem is we'll be using a transformer yes we will we'll be using the transformer model that we have already talked if you are not aware of transformer model well uh, i think i have I, i have made some videos so please check that out you know you can just go through the channel and the videos i think i've tried my best to explain the um transformer model uh, you know may, or maybe go through any articles that you find uh, easy to go through right we'll be using a transformer so essentially how we'll be model model this is we'll be taking this text and we are going to force we are going to make the model predict this image so essentially we'll be making the model making the transformer uh, we'll be using an encoder to make the model understand the text and we'll be we'll be using a decoder so in in the train while training time we want the model to predict that image and we'll be comparing that to the original image by that we'll be training a model that not only understands what is uh, or the or the relations between these words or relations between this data not only not only images but also the text but also the model will learn to predict that image given the text so this is uh, i think a pretty smart way because transformer is uh, it it is it's a very good idea that is uh, you know proposed so therefore we will be using the transformer to take the text and generate this image in a sequential model so we will we'll be having a encoder transformer encoder and transformer decoder so essentially we will be taking this text as the input to the text encoder 
right? We'll be passing the all things that we'll be doing. We'll be doing performing multi head attention, right? We'll be performing as a multi head attention on this text data on different um as for all of these words or tokens or representations, right? And and then we'll be passing what we have learned in the encoder to the decoder, in which we'll take this uh we'll take let's say in, in while first we'll take a entry string we're going to predict the next uh, token we'll be passing that here we're going to predict that again we're going to predict the next one we'll pass them and hopefully we'll be predicting all of them and we'll passing them to predict the final image so that is the idea of uh, transformer encoder and decoder so essentially we'll be doing that right in the training phase so we'll be taking the text as the input and in the training phase we are going to compare the model or the output of the transformer to the actual image uh, embedding. Uh, we're going to predict the latent noise or this image representation. And we're going to do that um, for like all of this dat uh, data, hit all of the training pairs. And then hopefully we'll be able to train on model. And the inference time, in the, in the inference time, we'll be providing the transformer with only this text and the model is for or, or the model is made to predict this output image. So that is the idea of, uh, Dali, how uh, they have actually done that? I think this is the thing. I think this is this is not complete Dali. Maybe, maybe this this is the paper, right? Zero short text to image generation. So that is the idea of. Um, I think that's it for this video. I really thank you for watching, and uh, yeah. So I'll see you in the next one. So yeah, thank you.